welcome to Stand By with JJ and Francisco. I would be the JJ part of that title. <laughs> and I'm Francisco Ramos. And we're both international comics, right? Indeed we are. <laughs> and we know a lot of artists from around the world. So we thought we'd bring you guys this project. And we're looking forward to introducing you to things and answering some of the burning questions that you have. Yes. And because this is our first official podcast, we're going to talk about our first. We're going to talk about our first coming to America, our first gigs, and our first bombs. Sounds like a good deal to me. Here we go. Episode one. Bye, hello. Episode number one. This is yeah. I'm we did it. I'm excited about this. We did we it. We did it. We made it to the couch together. Yes, the couch. We, yes. We, damn, we didn't. This is our Tonight Show couch. This, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, well, well, our set decorator isn't isn't uh, quite uh, Tonight Show uh, level, but yeah, you know, we're but, doing what we can. But it's tonight. We're yeah. doing a show tonight in the couch. So. Yeah, it counts enough. So it yeah. counts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to seeing uh, how we can grow. Uh, this this little experiment that we're yeah. doing, um, we're gonna have uh, a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, man, it's gonna be fun, and we're looking forward to also then having guests, you know. Yeah, we're gonna ask them the same questions that we're gonna ask each other, right? Well, this being the first episode, I right. think that's our deal. Is yeah. that we get to know each other, but the deal for you guys at home is, of course, you know, uh, we're stand up comedians, and uh, we got a lot of friends, and we thought if we started a podcast, we thought maybe we'll start. By getting friends on who can, maybe our unique selling point would be addressing some of the questions that we get after shows. Yes. Because some of the very, very popular questions we get after shows are, how did you get into this? Uh, you know, how do you start? Where did you move from? Where are you from? Mexico. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you Mexican? I, that's, that's the one I get a lot. So. Yeah. Are you Mexican? Are you? Yeah. I mean, you get. You Which know, I'm not, I mean, by the way. I'm not. I just want to. But that's. Because they probably yeah. don't know. But, but yeah. I'm not. Yeah. That's, Which. I'm fine if, if I am. There's nothing wrong with There's it. nothing wrong with it. <laughs> this is a Seinfeld episode, right? Like, no, <laughs> there's anything wrong with it. But I'm not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I hope you guys look forward to that because we're, we're international comics. I mean, I've only been a resident in America for five years. Um, and I was born here. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're just putting it on. <laughs> I'm also an immigrant, as yeah. you can hear by my accent. Yeah, which brings us to the questions like when when we get to the point where we have guests uh we're gonna have some international guests and stuff and we can ask them all those questions ab about their career and the choices they made that's what we call why we called it standby as well yes we're often flying standby to boop different boom. cities you know was, to entertain so we thought yeah, that was that was a, a boop boom. very good boop boop do you want that yeah you know yeah. i think everybody knows that boop boom. <laughs> yeah like that's, you're about to take off or it's exactly what it is man <laughs> and and, uh, and that's that's why I, i'm really looking forward to this episode because it gives me an opportunity to get to know you more yeah. uh, because the two of us going forward when we do have guests on we're going to want to ask them these kind of questions and i'll get to know things about you that i don't know yet actually because when i moved here to hollywood uh five years ago you were here as far as i was concerned you, <laughs> you were, were already here. established yeah um so i actually didn't the arrogance of me i didn't think of where you came from or anything like that i yeah. just thought he's, you just he's, care like how can i get on stage <laughs> yeah how can how, i use this guy how can i get on stage <laughs> and how, how quickly can i can i climb through through the ranks here and i and i thought you know this good good hollywood boy yeah. so so i'm really looking forward to learning this about you because of course you're originally from uh venezuela mm -hmm. and you know like my and i know that you moved here when you were young yeah. as, as an immigrant but that's the extent of my knowledge so i'm, <laughs> I'm dying that's it that's know all I know. exactly how that those first steps came for you man no well uh thank you for inquiring <laughs> <laughs> no uh well i mean yeah i was born in venezuela and i um i moved to the u.s when i was 12 uh, right moved. by choice yes by choice i was yeah. 12 and i was like you know what mom and dad <laughs> I'm getting the fuck out of here. Right. That's <laughs> I want to live by myself. You just rocked up. I don't care if you put me in a cage. I'll, I'll, sit, I'll sit in the cage for a good couple of years until you let me in. I'm yes. Like, no, it right. No, me. you were with your mom. It was like right? Madagascar. You know what I mean? Like, I was right. like, the... <laughs> yeah, yeah. no. So, uh, no, yeah, we moved. Um, uh, yeah, it's always funny because we both was like, yeah, it wasn't by choice. It was my parents are like, well, my mom got a job at the Pan American Health Organization. 
right. which is part of the World Health Organization. And they were based in Washington, in DC, right? In Washington, Washington DC. DC. Yes. Right. So that's where we moved. Uh, moved there uh, in '94. That's when I moved. Wow! Right on. Like, which was funny because when we moved, that's when. Um, right when the Blue Jays were winning World Series. Oh, right. That's why. <laughs> so yeah, Joe, America right. didn't even own baseball then. Carter. <laughs> Joe, yeah, Joe Carter, Joe man. Carter yeah, man. Yeah. I remember watching that in Venezuela, That's, actually. Yeah, the only hope of a of a Canadian nation. <laughs> that was it. Yeah, but uh, what's funny too is like '94. It was OJ was going on, which oh uh, wow. What <laughs> I didn't. My thing is like I remember watching that thing with OJ, and like I remember, and I was going like, wait, why why are they chasing the guy from Naked Gun? Yeah, because yeah. I had no idea that OJ was actually a football player, like a famous football player. I had right. no idea. I was like, yeah. I just remember watching Naked Gun with my dad, and I was like, that's a nice guy. Yeah, why are they chasing him? That's no doubt. That's like the quarterback who's doing all those all those insurance commercials now. What's his face? What's his... from the Broncos? Or whatever. Oh, uh, no, John Elway. Uh, no, no, not John Elway. Uh, Pey Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Our, our fantastic. Brian. Yeah, that's like if Peyton just goes nuts and starts. Killing his wife. Well, but, yeah, that, yeah, that too. <laughs> but Peyton's doing so many commercials now. I'm not surprised that there's going to be people now who are, who just think he's a spokesperson. That's true. Those commercials well, because you were you were young, you're 12 year old, you don't remember yeah. Peyton playing football. You now you see him supporting Papa John. Yeah, in Thai. So you move here. You've got OJ. Like that's a huge moment. Even for me, like I remember OJ. You remember OJ? I, I remember where I was and everything. But well, you yeah, grew like, up with s- knowing OJ as a football player. I did. Yes. Okay. You know. Yeah. I mean, he was pretty low. To, like I grew up in Canada, so yeah. uh, hockey players. It goes. It goes hockey players, <laughs> then Toronto Blue Jays okay. players, and then OJ was somewhere down here. <laughs> But he vaulted up into the attention yes, spectrum. Of course. Well, that must be. I can't even imagine because growing up in Canada, I'm pretty close to American culture. I, yeah, well, like I assume. I assume yes. I'm close to. It's American like culture. us, like in Venezuela, like growing up with Mexican culture, like because Mexico is kind of like the. It kind of like that. That whatever uh, happened in Mexico kind of grows into Latin America. Like there was right. this. I remember there's this big. Uh, a, a show uh, growing up like a small like a it's called El Chavo del Ocho which like everybody in Latin America grew up with so it's yeah. kind of like so like you were saying it's like in we like with Canada and US you know a lot about the US because yeah. you're together and it's like kind of like same language and everything same television I grew up with basically with uh, uh, I was going to say Boston Red Sox or whatever but, uh, but that part of America Busta Rhymes the, the, uh, yeah I grew up with Busta <laughs> Rhymes as well but yes we had the uh, East Coast New England, the New England tele, New England television was what. Oh, we, so you had it actually. What we it, got yeah. in uh, in Nova Scotia, I go like that. But yeah, Nova Scotia, mm-hmm. you know, you go to Maine and you turn right, and yeah. that's how you found my little my little. That's how you part. go to your house. Just just go to Maine that's, and turn right. It always cracked me up. I, I loved it because that's the way my dad used to explain to people where. Really? Nobody knows where Nova Scotia is. Right? It is actually next to it's, Maine. It is. Ac- see, see, wow. you see what's happening. It's actually, so like so, but it's part of Canada. Yeah, it's, it's Canada. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like a little island. No, it's it's a it's a part peninsula. Okay. But its main is right there if you see okay, it on the map. Okay. It's literally dangling off the side. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah, like Maine's as far north as you can go in America. Yeah. You know, then you go through the woods of Maine. You know, through Stephen King's territory. Ah. Because uh, you know, it's yeah, all the creepy hotels and all that kind of stuff. That's the Algonquin true. They, they Hotel. Go there. Yeah, yeah. And then when you come through the woods, you'll end up in Nova Scotia. So all the killers go to Nova Scotia uh, from Stephen King's novel. I reckon if they're not in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> they're hi- they're hiding out somewhere yeah, yeah. north yeah. up there. Yeah, but, but yeah. So I went. I came here in '94, and yeah. then um, and yeah, man. Just moving here was just like uh, we moved. We didn't know English at all. I had to learn English on my own. Right. Uh, my mom, uh, being a, uh, a Latin Catholic woman, put me in a private school so I could keep the whole Catholic school thing. Okay. But yeah. it was a very small private school, so it was only like basically one teacher per grade. And the teacher didn't, you know, she did as much as she could to try to teach me English, but like she had to teach a class. So right. Like, I basically just sat in the back and. And you were the only one. And you I was imagine. the only one. I, I imagine too, because being Latino, like they're not, you don't often make it all the way to Washington. I no, would that's assume. true. That's if you're true. coming through the border to yeah. America, most of the families would settle in. Well, like, I mean, I okay, there. I did. It was, <laughs> I didn't go through like 
like uh, like horse, you know. I think no, I, you, I mean, flew, you flew. I flew, in, you, yeah, flew yeah, into yeah. Wa- you flew into Washington D.C. and yeah, your yeah. mom had a proper job. Yes, we had a so, we had a visa, we had a yeah, passport. So you know, it was yeah. very. <laughs> we did it the legal way. You know? Oh yeah, when I mentioned him yeah, staying yeah, in yeah. a cage, I was just joking. Yeah, I yeah, wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you didn't we know. didn't. Uh, but yeah, no, it was, no. But what's funny is like no, there's actually a lot of Latinos in 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 D.C. because of all the embassies and all the international right. organizations yeah. so like it's not like it's, it's a whole it's actually like a whole variety of latinos it's not just yeah. one it's not like in miami there's like mostly cubans or in cali california there's a lot of mostly mexicans yeah. in dc it's like a very like a big melting pot of like I different know. types it's of almost latinos. like a collection of individuals yes <laughs> like, who Cause knew because who knew? interesting like as the elections didn't realize uh-huh. latinos it's not just one type of Latino. There's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. And there's a lot of them that are very conservative and a lot of them that are Oh, not. I know. Some people are screaming, like, who's the Latino for Trump? And, like, guess what? There there's are, a there lot are of some yes, others. Yes. Not, they're not being paid. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they're but, not going to get paid. <laughs> but, but, yeah. But, yeah. But, so, I, uh, so yeah, I got there. I mean, and it started, like, uh, I had to learn English, like I said, by myself. And it was tough because, you know, as a kid, you're, like, going to a school. I can only You know what I mean? That. You can, like, that... Just going to a new school is, is already fucked yeah. up. And then now not knowing the English. I mean, like, I remember a kid called me. Um, somebody was racist to me, and I didn't know they were racist <laughs> to me because I didn't know English. They called yeah, me a speak, and I thought right. he meant speak. And oh, I'm going, right. like, no, speak. And the guy's like, So you what? kept speaking. Yeah. And he's like, and he's like, no, you're an idiot. Speak. And I'm like, no, speak. <laughs> yeah. So I actually beat racism. <laughs> you did with ignorance. With, with, no, that wasn't ignorance. That was that was un, like lack of knowledge. Really, lack of knowledge. Yeah, but it's ignorance is yeah. bliss, man. Yeah, yeah, man. So uh, and then finally, I uh, I learned uh, English. Well, actually, this I, th- I want to talk about this. It happened to me quickly. I think I also like had to learn how to dress too because like. I, I want to try for basketball don't dress because, in Venezuela. because we don't dress. We're, <laughs> we're, just, we're naked. We're just, uh, naked people. We're naked people. A lot of nakedness <laughs> around. Uh, yeah. No, uh, no. But like, what's funny is like, I want to try for the basketball team, and uh, my mom yeah. bought me some shorts to play for the basketball team. Yeah. And uh, and I try them on. I go I go into the to the basketball practice. My dad before he drops me off, he goes like, Francisco, if you want to make the team, you have to be intimidating. So you look at each kid in the <laughs> eye and you tell him, you want a piece of this? And I was like, all right. That's... <laughs> Which I think he know he knew that I suck at basketball. And he's like, well, yeah. the only way he's going to make the team if he acts crazy. The, you know? Yeah. The, <laughs> the other thing is that kids kids never know how to be intimidating. Because even though that is a very important part of sports, it's like having yes. this passion and this aggression. Mm-hmm. But no preteen ever knows how to find it of course because i can see it. you're I, scared cause I think too because i was giving those lectures too when i was kid. you know i grew up hockey baseball basketball yeah. i played all those sports but i think when i was before i had like the the passion or the anger in me to try yeah. to, to try to beat someone which which sometimes you don't have when you're a kid. yes yeah and then your my father would be like be aggressive out there yeah, and yeah. to me aggressive was just like ah! <laughs> you know just i hadn't learned how to be how aggressive. to be yeah so, i mean yeah, I can... it's hard to be you know as a kid a 12 year old aggressive you're like you're you're a kid yeah and then but then i went in i started working into a court sorry and everybody just stare at me you know like in the movies and they look at me because i was i wasn't wearing shorts i was wearing boxers because my mom bought me boxers uh, thinking they uh, were... Because in Venezuela, boxers were never a thing. Everybody wore briefs. Yeah. I never grew up with boxers. I didn't know what boxers yeah, were. Yeah. So I'm walking in the court... In your underwear. Going, <laughs> going to each kid, going... In, you want a piece of this? In my underwear. You know? and, and they're like, no, we don't want a piece of you fucking freak. <laughs> right? Imagine yeah. that. And yeah. then, and obviously, I didn't make the team. I had to... They're like, uh, my dad is like, did you make the team? I was like, no, you have, I just have to register as a sex offender. <laughs> That's what happened. Which it's too, yeah, it's too bad that uh, that would be a useful tactic, actually. If, right? If you, you know, have every team should keep a position open for a, <laughs> for the for crazy, a, for a semi-naked underway. crazy guy and just have the other teams just... Uh, I just imagine, too, like, how of a stereotypical foreign guy... I was as like walking <laughs> naked in my underwear. Yeah. Like imagine like now I'm like oh my god. Like even if you write that in a comedy, you're like that's a little uh, too much of a stretch. And I did it. I know. Well, like yeah, I can see that being yeah. true. I but, mean that's yeah. That's... But it was tough. I mean and uh, and then also like but finally learn, learn English and then I realized I had an accent and then I was like fuck I'm an immigrant so I I, I realized yeah I wasn't never gonna fit in. 
as yeah. a full U.S. citizen. See, this is this is part of the fun of the podcast I think we're doing because because getting to know this because I can already see the the commonalities there. Like because I I grew up in the military. Yeah, and I. And I find this moving around, right? Yeah, because you had to move from base to base, setting, right? Yeah, and that sounds like a little bit like what you had to do when you were a kid as well. Yeah. Um, and it's you develop this sense of humor as a defense mechanism. Of course. Basically, because everywhere you... Because even though I spoke the language, of yes. course, in Canada, because in military, we would move from coast to coast. So you went from like... Oh, yeah, from like... Yeah, I always say I'm from Nova Scotia, but I went to high school. I went to grade school and high school in BC. And this... The, the, on the, the other coast. The yeah. travelers, how long did you stay in each base? We were about three or four years oh, each okay. time. So it wasn't My father as would get crazy. posted. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it went with a good rhythm for me, like, because it was all three, all three years of high school I got to do in British Columbia, and then and then uh, moved back for... I did university in Nova Scotia. So we went back and forth, but I but I know these same defense mechanisms yeah, yeah, because yeah. because you're of being all, in your underwear. <laughs> basically, <laughs> that's a defense mechanism. Well, basically, because even because moving to moving to British Columbia in grade ten, um, I had Nova Scotia and your fashion. friends. Oh, your no, fashion. no, 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 like oh. fat, like I wasn't wearing boxers, but I do remember <laughs> I had like some some ill fitting like just. Clothing that nobody nobody wore over there. We don't address a lot What's of the, the fashion. I think they were British Columbia is more trendy. I, was, I found myself in a more trendy place, like Vancouver, like more Vancouver Island. Uh, the base, uh, San, the Air, the Air Force base, uh, is in Victoria on Vancouver yeah, Island. I went there, and it's just a. Uh, so it's more cool. They're a little, yeah. It would be the nine hundred two and zero of Canada, basically, or, or the, or, or it's the, you know, it's the, co so the coastal you, nice. So you're like the country boy. I was definitely bullied a lot when I first showed really? up. Really? Yes, like, it, it was, was hard. Grade ten that? was hard for me, and uh, because I had left Nova Scotia, like beating you up, did they beat you? I, yeah, I got in a fight right first week. First wow. week, I got in a fight at the power field. I got in a fight with some guy. Wait, at the power field? It was called the power. Our high school fighting uh, field was called the power field. <laughs> they had a fighting field? Well, it was a power <laughs> grid. It like was a power fun. grid as well. So. Like, I imagined you, like, the, 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 the principal, like, giving you the, the tour of the, of the school. He's like, well, this is the soccer field. This is the power <laughs> field where all the fights happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. And it turns out, <laughs> Mr. Whitehead, you've been booked for one. You'll be expected there at 3 o'clock today. And your dad's like, be aggressive. <laughs> I don't want to be I know. Ah! <laughs> I was just out there with my ill fitting Nova Scotian clothes. So, did they them. beat you up or did you beat them up? I definitely got a little bit beat up. Um, it was all right. It was, I'll call it a victory in retrospect. <laughs> but it wasn't even my doing. It was, but I was the new kid at school and I think, uh, I think a girl liked me or something and then some guys got their backs oh. up. And it is 90210. Like, it's like it's so much yeah, drama. They went a bit 90210 on yeah. me and stuff. What's Canada? Like Degrassi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, was Drake in there? <laughs> Drake. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's more central. That's more central Canada. More more in the middle. But uh, but yes, that's that's basically the gist yeah. uh, of how. And so and I, and I, you know what? I feel like a lot of military and a lot of people who get displaced or have to move around, I, I find a lot of them go into comedy or, or into the arts because we learn those little tricks yeah. of. To avoid the fight. And also because we don't so that, fit in. Yeah. We never fully fit in because we move yeah. so much. And I think it's like that as a comic, I think that's kind of like the thing. We never, you only fit in until you meet other comics. You're like, oh, like, yeah. you're like me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like, oh, I finally fit in. Like that was what happened to me when I first started doing comedy. Yeah. I, yeah. I love I loved that feeling, feeling. Yeah. Right. Like, and we're getting that feeling very rarely right now because of the pandemic you, yeah you, you feel it when you go when i get to a gig we are comics we're all like we haven't seen each other in quarantine yeah, or anything like yeah, that yeah. and we're, we're still trying to social distance and yeah yeah and, yeah and we're like but we're so excited we're yeah. like we're like dogs off our leashes yeah, at, at yeah, the yeah. park we're like, oh, yeah, it is our to? office hours yeah, that, you yeah. know what i mean when we see, when we go in the clubs or whatever yeah. or, or a comedy show and we see other comics entirely and then we could just unload all the energy and yeah. the stuff and then, but speaking of the getting bully part, because that's what I was going to say about, uh, I've always found it intimidating. Like I wanted to do comedy all my life. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, really? And for me, Definitely. I mean. I never had that. You probably hadn't seen it until you moved to America, right? No. no. Well, uh, uh, I love that you like, <laughs> every time you, like you tell me like I'm fucking come from like, like from like the, the 1800s. It's like. Have you ever seen electricity before? No, no. <laughs> Had I, you seen electricity? <laughs> 
no, I imagine. I moved when I was 12, so of course I was just jerking off to uh, to a yeah. wall, you know. <laughs> Which, by the way, that's uh, we could talk about that later on in the yeah, in another episode. We'll that for our <laughs> first jerk offs, but that's how if you want to follow us and come back to that one, because I can tell you a story about that. But uh, no, uh, I never. No, I never knew about comedy or stand up because I was a kid, and then okay, turns out I was right. <laughs> but, but but not because of like of like cultural stuff, but like because okay. over there there's a lot of funny shows like SNL. There was a, like an SNL type show when I uh, when right. I was growing up in Venezuela, all that stuff. Only thing that I had is that I liked making people laugh. You know, that was my right. only thing. But I never, but I it is true what you were saying. I never knew that was like a profession. Even when I was here, like until I finally realized I didn't want to do what I major in. That's when I be like, oh, actually, stand up is like a profession. You can actually do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always a great revelation, isn't it? Because yeah. So, because of course, because I did grow up. But, with so you it. always wanted to be. Always wanted to be it, but was terrified to tell anybody. I didn't want to share uh, anybody, but I knew from like ten years old or whatever. Really. But, but yeah. I didn't want to give that answer. Yeah, because my brother and I used to watch. Like, like we were latchkey kids, latchkey kids. Because my that? my latchkey kids in North America, it means you always let yourself in after school and stuff. Because my mom uh, worked and my fa- uh, and my father okay, okay. worked military, so yeah. so we just had to be responsible kids. Let her, I was the oldest, and we had to let ourselves in and stuff. But my brother and I, we loved watching when we would get home from school. Uh, there was usually a run on CBC in Canada of about two hours of just comedy shows, you know, uh, repeat but like stand up or, or stand up. Yeah. There was oh, a show okay. called comedy club before that was just for laughs. Uh, so okay. I was aware of this and I was aware of the little bit of rebellion to it too. Mm. Cause of course my mom didn't want me like when I watched Eddie Murphy, I got in huge trouble, oh, really? you know, and I just remember thinking, Oh, just, this is what an amazing medium. It's, it, 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 you know, it's so yeah, yeah, yeah. powerful and it, and it makes me laugh, makes me happy. Yeah. And so it's what I wanted to do, but I knew it wasn't realistic. I knew you'd be ridiculous. Yeah. You said to your parents, I want to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 No parents are going to. So I Especially actually parents that didn't come from that, uh, culture of like art, artistic culture. Well, yeah. Right? And I think every parent wants you to pick a secure job, a secure. Well, avenue. well I mean, I'm sure then, like, Steven Spielberg's daughter is like, can I be a director? And he's like, yeah, sure. You're like, <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> like yeah. I mean, yeah. like it's, it becomes Shoot, because of what. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, of course. You know, like I think it. Oh yeah, you can has... get the opportunities that your parents afford you because I love like Ben Stiller's life. Like Ben Stiller raised by people in Jerry theater, Stiller. Jerry yes. Stiller, and goes on like to, so. So in that case, yeah, no, great. but that's Tell what me. I think. It has to do a lot with like how your parents. You know where they come from, how they were. You know, like if they're just like, oh, you like my parents, for example, was very much about, you know, being a professional and going to college. You know, yeah. because that's how they. That was their thing when they because when they were young, nobody did that. Yeah. Now when I grew up, I'm like everybody did that. That's yeah. like yeah, everybody goes to college. So it's like, yeah. what what yeah. else? What else? You know. Yeah. So uh, for me, it was more like a complete revelation of like. Ooh, I majored in finance and international business, and I was like, and the last class that I took, I was like, wow, I don't, I hate this, <laughs> and I yeah. needed to find them like, and that's when I always say like I had like quarter life crisis. So I was like, okay, what the fuck do I want to do? Because I was like, right. why do I want to do that? I want that's gonna make me happy. Because I remember talking to my other friends, and they were like, yeah, they had their, oh yeah, now we're gonna do two years of this, and then do my masters, and and I remember going like. Also, I felt like crappy because it's like they, you know what your life was going to be. Like, it was like right. very like, if I did this and then you get married and they get divorced and then yeah. you do this. And then I was like. They have a five year plan. Yes. And yeah. I was like, I don't want that shit. I want to like not know what the fuck's going to happen. I know. I'm on about t- year 20 of my five year plan. <laughs> I always think it's, been, it's taken a while. But yes, yeah. I totally feel that way too. Because I, I went to university as mm-hmm. well. I took health professions. Okay. But I still love the idea of the stand-up comedy thing but there wasn't comedy clubs in my city in mm. halifax nova halifax nova scotia has only had a comedy club i think like uh probably less than 20 years now but, oh, okay. but uh but there was nothing on the east coast mm. right there the yuck is our national uh chain and i think there used to be 
And then, but there was this sweet spot, I would say, probably for 20 years where there was nothing in Halifax. So I felt that way in uh, taking my health degree. Yeah. And I was intending to take my master's in Toronto with my real motivation being so that I could be in this city of Toronto and do stand up at night. Yeah. That was another secret motivation I didn't want to tell my parents. Yeah. But I actually had a lovely twist of fate in a way because because like you i didn't enjoy my degree mm -hmm. and i finished it in south carolina I, I did work for marriott for my last semester to do my dissertation i was in marriott running dolphin tours and stuff for wait what yeah i worked for marriott hotels on you ran dolphins on hilton head island yes and i ran over dolphins <laughs> i just it was wait, just a I, rebellious oh, wait, wait, you're the original <laughs> tiger king <laughs> you're the dolphin <laughs> king <laughs> Well, basically, we did have some rough dolphins that looked like they were, they were worse for yeah. wear. We had one guy called uh, Chopper who always who had little chunks out of his face because he uh, would always swim into the boats. He was always fast. Oh, like swimming. a not dolphin, not a and, guy. Yeah, no, not a oh, guy. Okay. I'm still like, talking about. <laughs> I'm giving the dolphins. The dolphins all have personalities, but it, basically, working for Marriott in Hilton Head uh, Island. Um, finishing my degree, it did make me realize, like, I just I don't love. I should love this. And I don't love it as much. Yeah. There's also some restrictions to working for Marriott when you're going to, uh, even though you're doing. Don't fuck the dolphins. You can't fuck the dolphins. <laughs> you're not allowed to fuck the dolphins. But you also, you have to, have to be clean cut, which I was never uh... a fan of. And some of the other dolphin tours, they didn't have to be clean cut. Uh... So I do remember feeling like in my polo shirt and, you know, and, and trying to finish my degree. Uh, with these people, and I remember looking at all the kind of the hippie, the you know the the outdoorsman uh, types who were, they also ran dolphin tours and all that kind of stuff, and I just I remember feeling that they seemed to be having more fun yeah. with with their lives. So that's what made me go decide that it wasn't for me and I needed a break. Got it. And at the point of taking my break, I decided to take it in Scotland. I, I went over to wow. Scotland because I'm because being Canadian. Uh, you're given a young person's visa. You can you can get a young person's visa. What's a young person's visa? Basically, we're in the Commonwealth, right? So Britain, you know, we're part of the British Empire. Canada so is. Canada is, yeah, yeah, oh. man. We got the Queen on our money. Oh, I didn't know that, yeah. Brian. You yeah, know yeah, that? Oh, <laughs> there we go. All right. <laughs> yeah. Not very well. But kind of very and uh, yeah, the Commonwealth they do a deal with. Uh, so they basically you're still owned by England. Yeah, if you want to put it that way, we're, we're, we're still... They're still owned. your bitch. We're still... Yeah. We're, we're, yeah. We don't feel very owned, but I'm sure I'm sure the queen could be a tiebreaker in something. Okay. But I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not sure at what point she'd rock up and go, ah, yeah. I've changed my... You can't do that, Canada. <laughs> uh, but, but basically, uh, we get this permission to go anywhere within the Commonwealth for a couple of years. Think of it. So Australia, New Zealand, Canada. Uh, that's why we actually have a lot in common with each other because mm -hmm. because we actually have some British television and of some course. British influences. Yeah. Anyway, I just decided I decided that the Hilton Head Island uh, recreational uh, activities weren't for me, and I went to Edinburgh. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I didn't realize how healthy the British comedy world was. Yeah, I didn't like. It was like I knew Eddie Izzard. Yeah. And I knew a bit of Billy Connolly. But when I arrived there, I just saw one of the healthiest circuits and everything. And I, I so I was in Edinburgh and there was a, a place called the Stand Comedy Club. Um, and this is what I was going to say to you, too. Like, I found myself in the perfect position, even though I didn't go there to do stand up comedy. I just went to try to lose myself for a summer in Europe. That's, I was just doing that. You know, Did you play I, Eminem? I got to find myself. Did you, you know, did you do you play Eminem? I I reckon I did. I reckon uh -huh. I was shadow boxing through the streets, <laughs> playing some Eminem, catching some attention. But but that's how I uh, I feel like it fell into my lap because wow. because I've always that's cool because having been bullied in those little situations or when you move to different places. Here I was in Scotland now, staying at a hostel, having new friends. You were accepted. So. I was accepted, but also I wasn't afraid to try stand up in front of them mm. because I would say so in all of my done... other uh, places, I would have been scared. I, w I wouldn't have wanted to start in front of my university friends. Yes. I wouldn't have wanted to start in front of my high school friends. Mm -hmm. But here I was in Scotland. I had new friends of like a week or whatever. 
Mm-hmm. Not that they were expendable. They were yeah. great people, but I thought, you know what? I can try to do stand up yeah, in front yeah, of yeah, these yeah. people. And so that's how I was able to make the decision to give it a shot. Cause I've yeah. heard other comics, especially here in America, I've heard quite a few stories of American comics who packed a room with their friends yeah. for their first show. And well, I'm like, that would be terrible. That- yeah. I couldn't think of anything worse. I just want strangers. No. Well, yeah. When I'm out of the guns, which is you know? same thing that happened to me, which is why I moved to LA. Because right. I grew up in D.C. and I was like, hey, if I go to New York, I had a girlfriend at the time. And I was like, I remember it's going to be easier for me to go to New, to New York to D.C. because it's a four hour drive. Yeah. And it was just there. And also I didn't want to start comedy in D.C. because also same thing. I already had like a social life there. Right. And I was like, See, yeah. so L.A. was like. That's I was the new, advantage. nobody knew me who I was, yeah. and I met new people, and I just started doing yeah. it. Yeah, come and, come and die in front of strangers. Of course. Yeah, Instead. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, then you, cause then you just can leave. Of course. You can go, because, I mean, because I remember that feeling. And what was your first was, uh, show, did you, your first gig? Was it in, uh, in, in over there in Edinburgh? Yeah, right. That's, that's exactly how I did it. So there I was in Edinburgh. There was a comedy club called The Stand Comedy Club. Have you ever club. done stand-up? Be asked I had before never that? done stand up. Oh, okay. I had never but done you had it. bits already I just, written? Nope. I just, I knew that I, I always knew that I wanted to do it. I guess, I think I did have some ideas in my head that I always had as a kid. I just, you know, just little things. I remember it used to be stuff about pop, pop music, uh, pop music, you know, helplines, calling help. Like, just got it, got it. Those first little observations. Wait, didn't you, you did make. that last week? And that same bit? About help what's, not what's that? <laughs> I was like, didn't about you do pop that? music? <laughs> yeah. You just keep doing, you keep, doing, you keep doing that same bit. No, <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean that's one thing you learn straight out of the gate. Is it? Oh right, we do the same thing every week. This, this gets even easier. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, because that's people, the thing people that people think, think. Yeah, people who think comedians are like they gotta have new stuff. Every and that's week. gonna Where's say. By the way, if you wanna just make it easy to understand comics, it's the same thing as musicians. They play the same songs. They don't. Yeah. Every time they go up, they don't fucking learn a new song. They have a full song. Then an hour after they did yeah. their tour and whatever, they come up with new yeah. things. Yeah. And you keep honing it down yes. and you keep tagging it. And usually the way it works, too, is if you ever do record it for something, for a TV show or something, the next gig, you'll find a new tag for it. Yeah. Like, that you'll be blown away. You'll be like, why didn't I've been doing this bit? for a year now and yeah. i haven't thought of this tag yeah. and you always the tag always comes to you the day after you've recorded it for yeah because you let it go yeah 100 percent. but so your first gig was there and it was good first gigs yeah stand comedy club it was called um and yeah it was a great way it's hard to explain this to people when they do ask me like where did you start and i go well scotland they're like but you're not scottish and yeah um so there i was they it was really good they had open mic like an open mic night but that wasn't, I find it weird here in America because I've noticed, I've never done them or anything, but you guys have bucket nights and stuff yeah. like that. And yeah. uh, I say you guys, but you know, um, but in a, in Britain, the way they do the open mics is you just, they have a, a vibe of who the new comics are around mm-hmm. and they'll take about 10 to 12 of them. Every, you know, they'll, they'll cut it off. They won't. I mean, I've seen them do it at the Laugh Factory when the guy just walks out and go, all right, all 40 of you, put your names yeah. in this bucket. And I'm yeah. like, oh, that's what a terrible way to try to develop yourself. Yeah. Um, so the promoter at the Stan Comedy Club, so he kind of had his ear to the ground and they had 12 spots every Monday night. If he had some favorites, he'd put them in. So of there was course. usually the same three or four people and then it was filled out with another eight. Mm-hmm. But yeah, great, like, great nurturing vibe yeah. to, to get into comedy and to not be intimidated yeah you know you know throw out that canadian accent yeah to the scottish people and yeah. try to learn their lingo you yeah. know so it was a it was a it was comfortable for me to yeah. start you so know it was good you did good did good until my first death so yeah. my first death which i found this interesting because like, i don't you say bomb you mean bombing yeah i say death but okay yeah but i that's, know this that's how bomb, you do it in europe i believe or that's so. just you I don't, no, I, I think we call it dying. We we call it dying. Dying. I yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, but but bombing is here. Like you bomb, I bomb. You wanna, you guys one hundred percent use this guy's bombing? bombing. Right. You never say I died. No. Right. No. That's because the thing is like when you say I killed, it means you did good. So how are you gonna say I kill and I die? It's the same shit. No, it's different. You either kill or you die. 
No, but that's I. Their, their, but it's kind of similar. Opposites. No, but it, but it's in the same of death. So I don't think no bombing. You just bomb. You bomb. I bomb. Yeah, all right. Or you bomb or yeah. yeah. I love I love die because it just sounds more tragic. And yeah, that's very more, Shakespeare. Yeah, like, I, like, death. I did, but yeah. So I've just never used the vernacular of bomb. Yeah. My first death in which, which yeah, I, I don't know how yours happened and everything, but it always it it teaches you that lesson of like not to be too sure of yourself, you yeah. know, because that's when it arrived. That's my first first death. Arrived, my first bomb arrived uh, eight gigs in. Okay. So I was only eight gigs in. Wait, so you did good the first eight times? First seven times. But what's I good? Like very... good? Like good? Or like like you think was good, but it wasn't good? You no, know what was, I mean? It was pretty good. Like I did. It's kind of like, you, it's like the first time you had sex. It's like, well, I was really? Only doing was weekends. it good? Well, I got to do, well, I was doing weekends. So, so yeah. like, because open mics are Monday nights. You know, so I did I did like two Monday nights and then they put me straight on to a weekend. OK, so I so I went from so I was quite lucky. I was pushed forward yeah. like kind of quickly. So I did I did these two. So Monday, a Monday night, a Monday night. And then I did like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday and then probably a Thursday. And then boom, gig number eight was on that Friday. I don't know why I just ironically wound up on my middle finger. Yeah, but that's basically what the gig did to me. Um, so that, so there it was. So it was like my second ever Friday, but I was cocky, you know, like the, yeah. the last week and I did went well. And I was also learning about Scotland and this is how I put a foot wrong because here I was in front of a Scottish audience. I'm eight gigs in and we had a whole bunch of firefighters and I Fi had, uh, firefighters. yeah, firefighters. There was like yeah. three tables of firefighters and I had just been learning the vernacular. In Scotland, doesn't it rain all the time? I'm I joking. think everybody I needs know. fire <laughs> <fires> <laughs> out there. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a good point. I mean, it's like, do you really? <laughs> <laughs> that would be great if you were a firefighter and in a fire starts and you just kind of lean out the window and you're like, <laughs> ah, ah, that's yeah, fine. It's gonna, don't, I don't need to go. Yeah, they don't, they don't need us. They don't need us. I, yeah, it was. I just had this cockiness. But I remember I had also used, like, I had also just learned a new word, uh, which was cunt. You know, because uh, because when you come from North America, wait, that's not that's, an American thing. Well, it exists. Or, or Canadian. Thing? Well, it exists in North America, but it's the perception is very different in Britain. In okay. Britain, they can use they can use cunt all kinds of ways. It's not oh. it it can be a compliment. In oh, Britain. really? You so, cunt? Or yeah, you could say like you that? know like you're a good cunt. You know yeah. he's a good cunt. Ah, you cheeky cunt. Cheeky you know, cunt. so they use terms like that. Okay, because ah, yeah. here's very bad. Well, like in America. Yeah, know. I think Americans haven't they haven't totally learned the multiple uses for it yet. You yeah, know, you know. Is. So it's yeah, tone and you know, etc. Yeah. But anyway, but I, I basically made the the dire mistake of uh, using it on the firemen. Uh -huh. who what were did there. you say? I said, you bunch of cunts. Oh, yeah, that's not good. And they weren't happy. <laughs> I might not have learned how to how to say it properly, but they were. They were quickly up from the tables. Oh, and they and they, yeah, about my, to fight you. My, they wanted to fight oh, me. Ah, fuck. So it got crazy. So they flushed. The, they they rushed the stage, and I um I kind of went to the back of the stage. <laughs> I still have flashes of this in how like because I was you know I got the flop sweat on. I don't think I was doing well either. I think, yeah. I think I had come up on stage all cocky from my it didn't work set, it didn't, and it, it wasn't didn't connect, working yeah. and a firefighter probably said it ain't not working for you mate or something and, and like, i said oh shut up you bunch of cunts or oh, whatever oh, and i'm like yeah. oh god what's this kid doing so they were all after me and uh i still remember when i got to the backstage area there was another comic there called brian hennigan and he's uh, he's now Doug Stanhope's manager. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a Scottish guy. But so he was there, and uh, I come backstage, and Hannigan just laughs straight at me. He just goes, "Ha ha! I heard that you were good." <laughs> 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 he was just laughing. I was like, "Holy shit!" And now there's two doors. They're all coming for me. And uh, this lovely lady Corey, who worked at the club, she came and grabbed me. And I uh, I don't know if it's irony or not, but she hid me on the fire escape. Oh, that's hilarious. outside. So I was up on this ringed fire escape <laughs> in the rain enough because it is Scotland yeah. uh, in the rain in this fire escape. I was up there for about an hour 
while these angry firefighters were looking for me. Oh, but they wanted to beat you up. Oh yeah, they they were screaming in the back streets like, "Where is?" They They were using they were using the term "cunt" properly. And uh, so that so that my first bomb was a hell of a bomb. Yeah, you know, man, it still didn't deter me. But when I you know when I got yeah. off the fire escape, I still kept you still going, wanted but... to do it, which is weird. Wow, yeah. I, uh, that's that for me it was um it wasn't uh, as bad. I wouldn't get, I didn't say come to you didn't like you didn't necessarily put your I didn't foot put on. You just didn't vibe with them. Some no, people's first death is just I just didn't no, vibe. For me it was um uh was just actually like. I mean, I've been doing comedy, I, I think maybe like about uh, after when I did that, like out a year, because I started with me, like started doing open mics when I moved to L.A., you know, just doing open mics. And then I actually did my first, uh, I would actually do shows in hostels, you know, yeah. like in here. Is like, that you the know, Hollywood hostel? There was one in uh, by the improv. Yeah. Remember, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. And I used to, Chris D'Elia actually would do uh you know, shows there too, or whatever. You know, it was run by this guy, Matt Semini. And um, it was funny, I would do those hostels. And I remember uh, that wasn't one of my first, because my first gig, I always say, like, it was like the one where I got, like, like I put my name in those little flyers or whatever, like that bull shaped thing. And, like, I felt like it was like a professional gig. I made it. Gig. I made, yeah, yeah. it's the first time you get your name in print. And he went, yeah. And it's just this tiny thing. And I had a like... friend come in and stuff like that, but not, you know, like a roommate or anything. But it wasn't, it went good. Yeah, and I, uh, it felt, and then, but the hostel ones, I remember when I always remember is doing jokes that I was, that I'm like, oh, these jokes are so bad. That, I, that gave me confidence to go like, if I can get, these people to laugh at these jokes that I wrote so bad, then I'm good. Then I'm doing something good. Cause one yeah. of the jokes was like, like, like the, um, why do tea bag, like tea, uh, you know, the tea bag has, uh, has instructions, you know, like right. it's always like, take it off, yeah. put hot okay, water. Yeah. And like, and to me, it's like, that's a given. This is, these are the, the first kind of, the first kind of, of jokes. jokes that you do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to call comment lines and go, I have a comment, you know, tasty yeah, or whatever. Yeah. No, well, like, but that wasn't, that was a setup. The joke was like, that's like making, like putting instructions of a guy on how to make a guy happy. It's like pull down his pants and suck his cock. Right. Yeah. And that was the thing. But it's still bad, but it was like, <laughs> you know, but it's, I was like, it's all in the show. Yeah. It's all, it's all in the thing, you know? <laughs> But to me, I was like, I remember going like, man, if I can make, cause I remember going like, this is not good. Like, <laughs> but if I can make, if our people are laughing at this shit, then I'm like, but I, by my first bomb was actually, uh, I was at the, um, at this club in North Hollywood uh, here in LA and I went in and um, I remember going, I, it was like one of my first times there and I went in and uh, the lady put me in the, in the show. I was just going to do five minutes and I went up. And I, I, it was crazy because as soon as I said, said something, it just like it just died. Like it, no, right. you didn't get yeah. any. It's one of those things where you're like, what's like? Even I could have been like, yeah. hello, and <laughs> you just feel just, the vacuum of it vacuum. all. Like, and and at that point, I think I was still, you know, I was still doing open mic, so like I yeah. didn't know how to handle it, and it kind of just went like, ooh, like you know, when you're like, you start sweating, and you're like, and I don't yeah. remember what I started saying. But I was gonna do five minutes, and like at the second minute, the lady, I could see the light going like, taka, 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 you know, and I uh, and I get out, and and the whole thing that people understand is like comics are always very supportive with each other. I mean, in a way, you know, like we're laughing off, we're we'll laughing on, you know. I mean, in terms of the show, I think you know, like with with people, like uh, you know, like relationships is another thing, but like in yeah. the shows, like. Cause like if people like what I mean is like if um, if you're in a club or whatever a show and you do good the comics will come up to you hey man good set that was good that was fun yeah. and that but if you do bad if you bomb comics are never gonna come to you like wow that suck it's mostly they just don't fucking talk to you it's like yeah. you got leprosy you know what yeah. I mean like that they, they and just that's let what you ha- stew in it yeah I remember just, going in yeah. walking down the stairs and then trying and like looking at comics going like. Like for just uh-huh. looking for somebody to go like, hey, that wasn't that bad, and nobody wanted. To. And I remember like just like, just basically just like I gotta get out of here. So I walked to my car, and you start that feeling of like, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. And uh and yeah, that was like the only like truly bomb that I had. Like that was it. Like right. And then uh and then oh, you next, don't you don't get them every every now and then. They don't no, because it's different. Because bombs now like like I could say I had a bad set or a bad show, but I yeah. still. 
it's I can still do it good. It's kind of like right. It's like well, I, you, well, you, okay. Now go ahead. No, okay. it's kind of like being a basketball player and saying like, well, he had a bad game, but I still score some points. I still, you yeah. know, like that kind of still thing. Got but like, in there. yeah, but like, so I can still. So I, yeah, I mean, that never gonna goes away. You're always gonna have right. like good shows and bad shows. But truly, always. bomb were like, like literally were like nobody laughs and it's like you can hear a pin drop. Like, yeah, that was the only one that I had. And oh, after, right. and then, but the great thing that I did it was like the next day I went up. And then I did good again. Yeah. And, and then that's it. And then you just keep going and you realize, oh, this is how it is. You're going to have yeah. bad. And sometimes it might be the crowd. Sometimes it might be the show. Sometimes you go like, fuck, you know, like you just didn't have it that day. Yeah. And but you do, like I said, the more you do and the, big, the better you become, the more you realize it's like it's to me like the key of a good comic is uh, being stability, like knowing like. Like, a, like, again, going to basketball player, like, knowing that, oh, that per that guy or that girl is always going to, you know, you can yeah. always count on that person to score, yeah. to play good. Sometimes, you know, and then obviously you want to be a LeBron type, yeah. and like, you're always fucking. Well, I was going to, like, like LeBron, or like all the greatest basketball players or athletes, they never have uh, two bad games in a row. No, really. no. Like, actually, and their bad games are always out. good games. But I feel that way <laughs> about, like, dying on stage as well. I've never died on stage twice in a row. No. I kind of think. Because it's the humbling part of the of, yes. of bombing. Is, yes. the, is the humbling part that makes you do good. The yeah. next time, it, all that cockiness goes away, yes. and then you put on a show for people, even, and you redeem yourself. Even yesterday, I did a Zoom show, and like, yeah. and we went to the show that we did. I did a show at this uh, dugout at this. Uh, yeah, that was fun. And that was it? fun. I did yeah. good in that one. I yeah. and I had the little cockiness, and then I did this show yesterday on Zoom. And, oh, did you feel too cocky? <laughs> and it was like I was started swearing for some stuff that I'm yeah. like I'm done because I was doing all the, obviously new shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, that didn't work. <laughs> but, you know, but yeah. you know, but that's you don't, part of the season. But, as that's, well. but you also this... know, like I was blame. It, it was like it's kind of like having sex, you know, like in a point like you get to a point like you know how to do what. Like, I'm not a porn guy, but I know I can fuck good. You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know like, yeah, but like. You know, and like, and then, all, and then, if I get cocky, I might do a move that I'm like, and then, and then yeah. it's like, well, no, it's like you're not a porn guy. <laughs> Keep sticking to your to yeah. your routine. It's I have my routine. You have the direct feedback there. And she's I have like, my uh, routine. I like the old stuff. Yeah, yeah. Give me the like, old. Oh, yeah. <laughs> give me some of that back catalog there. Uh, give me the T. Yeah, the, the, can you do the tea bag thing again? <laughs> I'll tell you this: they're they're like like well done if if considering that you haven't felt that way for a while i mean i haven't felt that way i haven't felt that way for a what while felt that, what, what? like feel that that bombing that 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 death of like that well, vacuum well that goes I, what i think room. that to me that's i yeah i don't think i don't think for us unless we purposely well, do it we're, well, because we're so yeah once that's what i was gonna say once you have some experience yes and and you're dying you it's not, it's always your fault. It all, it's always yeah. your fault. But but you get an, enough experience as a comedian, where you're like, it's not fucking my fault. It's your fault. It's no. it's the audience's fault. And you, but also, you, you constantly feel like you guys fucked it up. Yeah. I didn't. But also, you, at this point, you, we can also adjust a lot. Yeah. Like, like if we, if I do something, it doesn't hit right away. I will adjust and. And you can have, like, that's what I'm saying. That's having good shows and bad shows. It's like, yeah. well, this show, I didn't connect with them at all. But you still got stuff in. Like, yeah. it wasn't complete bomb. Because what I wanted to mention, though, is the because the, the bombing season is coming up, the traditional bombing season. So I don't what's, know if you've done this, but I find Christmas. The Christmas ah. season is the hardest uh, season to, to entertain people. I, I imagine Zoom gigs or whatever whatever we have to do in COVID uh, will be always different. But Christmas is always tough because Christmas is full of office parties. Yes. Who generally look at each other instead of the comedians. Well, those like shows have are... to come out, and that and that creates the vacuum. Yeah. So they're very tough. So you, so no comedian, uh, you know, no experienced comedian, uh, goes into Christmas season cocky. Yeah. And, and we all go in going, oh god. Well, and also at that point, I think there's also a difference, and then we can discuss this later because we're uh, we have to head out. But I think. Corporate shows, Christmas shows, all those shows, those are much, much different than doing the club show, you yeah. know? So, like, those, because those you're getting, basically, you're, like, uh, you're getting paid to entertain. You're a puppet yeah. in that point. So, you got to stick to, you can't, like, we can't, you know, you can't say cunt, you know, yeah. in a corporate. Oh, yeah. You know, not... <laughs> like, so, you got to, you got to keep it very, like, uh, you know what I mean? So, that's yeah, the whole entirely. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, completely, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, well, 
I mean, this is fun. Yeah, this man. Has been fun. I hope it's you guys, our first I hope one, you guys, man. We did it. First one. We're not I hope you guys have enjoyed anymore. listening to us chat. Yes. Chatting about comedy. We have so much more that we, you of know, course. That we're get to. I mean, just, and uh, it's going to be fun. Like, you know, we're going to get guests and then we're going to yeah. discuss all this stuff. Uh, yeah, like we said at the top, we got ideas to get some great international guests and shine lights on all your questions and that. And we'll be able to interact with you as well. Yeah. Um, follow us and all the, you know, subscribe, yeah, follow click all that kind of all stuff. social media. And then obviously put comments, and if you will try to answer those questions. Yeah, cool. if you put down comments, then yeah, then we can always answer them. And uh, who knows? Who knows where this will grow? I mean, that's you understand our our angle now that we want to we want to try to get these comedians and entertainers. We can't wait to introduce you to some some of these great artists from around yeah. the world. So they and, can tell and, us and, about their. Experience. And that's our gist. We thought our unique point will be that we'll try to ask them about their their background and their their beginning in in the art form and hopefully you guys will will find that cool man yeah yeah so uh yeah so do your thing have a good time in the meantime and uh yeah Yeah. see you in the next one bye